Hello everyone, it's Micah. Welcome to our Wednesday reaction series where we are counting down, uh, well we're not counting down anything because all of these are number one songs. I just like using, using the phrase counting down. That's why I have to always correct myself at the beginning of these videos. We are going through all of the number one songs of the 1980s and we've covered a surprisingly large amount of ground and that's partly uh, because a lot of the songs in the in the year of 1980 were big hits that spent multiple weeks at number one on the charts. That allows us to go through the year even quicker. Uh, all the songs we've reacted to, well, most of the songs have had four, five, six week stays at the top. And that has allowed us to get all the way to uh, July of 1980 when Billy Joel uh, spent one week in July and one week in August at the top of the charts with his song it's still rock and roll to me and that's what we'll be reacting to today i am familiar with this song um it's recent enough um well you know what i say it's recent enough but last week's video was coming up by paul mccartney and i was not familiar with that song i feel like that one did not have any real legs after its initial chart run it's still rock and roll to me it had because of its subject matter i believe continued to get airplay um, it's uh, my interpretation of the song and I've never listened to it super super closely but my interpretation has always been that it's a very literal commentary take on the business of and the fashions of and the sound of rock and roll um, this is an interesting parallel to my Wednesday uh, uh, I'm sorry my Tuesday reaction series where I just hit 1955 uh, and I'm in I, I next week I'll be getting into the songs of the rock era for the first time and uh, or the initial rock and roll era and so this is Billy Joel going back 25 years later and adding some commentary about how things are in 1980 versus how they were when rock and roll started 25 years earlier. Interestingly, interestingly enough, uh, if you project 25 years into the future, uh, that still just puts us at the year of 2005, which is nearly 20 years ago. So that's a little mind boggling for me, but to think that rock and roll had only been around for 25 years in 1980, and just to think we've we've almost lapped that that time frame twice since then at this point it, it's 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 interesting rock and roll is still around some people think it's dead some people are trying to beat it to death and as we get into some other reaction videos um from some more recent number ones i i will explain what i mean by that um uh, but it's interesting to to see this video and see and listen to this song as a snapshot of what rock and roll appeared to be at this time versus what it was in the mid 50s um, or I could find out that my interpretation of the song was all wrong all along but I think it's a pretty literal lyric so um, I'm excited to get into depth this is a uh, this this video is captioned so I will be able to catch every lyric now when we get around to uh, listening to We Didn't Start the Fire, which was one of the, if I'm not mistaken, one of the last number one songs of the 1980s by Billy, by Billy Joel. Uh, we're definitely going to need a lyric video for that because, or a, a, a captioning for that because that one's very dense. Uh, but I'm glad to have those. A lot of Billy Joel songs are dense. He's, he's, he, he's a definitely, he's, he's a wordsmith for sure. Um, but let's get into this one and see what he's talking about back in 1980. Okay, looks like we're getting into a uh, a bridge of sorts. The verses here went by very quickly. They're very the the verses are very sh short and choppy and very to the point, which uh, replicates the the, the tight, uh, bare bones musical style of of early's of early uh, rock and roll in the 1950s. He's, I feel that Billy Joel is consciously replicating that that stripped down style that evokes uh, evokes the '50s uh, to echo the sentiment of the or in perhaps to contrast 
the the sentiment of the song. He's grounding it in the sound of original classic rock and roll, but his overall message in the song, even if you don't parse all of the lyrics about the car that you're driving or the the type of clothes you wear, um, the message of the song is in the word still. He's really this is a song about inclusivity. It's about saying that people are riffing on it in different ways. People are dressing different. People are driving different. Just the, the what's considered in about it now may be different than before. And I may not even go along with that. I may or may not go along with the fashions, but regardless of whether I agree with it or not, or whether it's something I'm participating in, it's still part of that through line of rock music. And it's a, it, I've, in my opinion, it's a, it's a generous and uh, warm sentiment uh, saying that you know that really speaks to what this channel is about. It's uh, we you know th the reason that I started this channel really is because there's so many people out there saying that music sucks. Music sucks. All music today is terrible. Nobody has any talent anymore. Everybody's using auto tune. Uh, nobody learns. Nobody's playing instruments and like any one of a number of, of completely unsupportable conclusions, which is based on looking at. Uh, just certain things that are happening uh, at the very top of the charts or in very or in certain types of music and you know more generally I would echo Billy Joel's sentiment and say you know does you, you know it doesn't matter how they're doing it it's still music they're still getting out there and they're expressing themselves and the record labels were putting out what they what they felt like would sell back then and they're doing the same thing today nothing's really changed it's it's still music so that's so i am right on board with what billy joel is saying here uh, let's get into the the what i what i'm presuming is the bridge here. struck me at the end of that that what if he's playing a trick on me what if what if this is all tongue-in-cheek and he's speaking from the perspective of someone who doesn't have a good grasp on what rock and roll really is Good songwriters do adopt different personas in the service of their music, but keeping in mind that possibility, I still think that Billy Joel is editorializing here directly, like he's talking directly to the camera in the music video. You can hear him coming through the speakers and, and grabbing you and, and forcing his opinion on you. It's they're, they're, this, clear, this song appears to be clear editorializing and I think it shares that in common with we didn't start the fire and now that I think about it his songs are quite like I'm I'm, I'm, I'm going through a catalog in my head of other songs of his the what he's trying to do here and what I think is is probably a signature of his songwriting is he's trying to he's not just painting a canvas he's not just showing you the story he's trying to persuade you his songs are urgent a lot of times like in in the, the songs i'm thinking of in my head without cataloging them all right here the ones i'm thinking of all seem to be about persuading the listener to get on board with his perspective uh and i've never really thought about that but there is a that sense of urgency about billy joel's uh lyric writing um there's a ton of references in there there's uh i want to look up the bo brummel thing um, I feel like that was a little before my time, uh, and there's other very this very discreet and detailed images that went over my head. Luckily, the um, the chorus speaks for itself. He could have almost not said any of those things. He comes back to his thesis, and it's still rock and roll to him. Um, so I don't. So yeah. So. In that sense, I don't have anything else to add other than what I said at the first break because this song just goes like an arrow, straight like an arrow, all the way through the same message, the same delivery, the same, uh, just different details used in service of the same message. And, uh, and so uh, I, I do really admire his songwriting, uh, the lyric writing involved, and 
he did go all out to make the song as retro early rock and roll as he possibly could down to the sax solo uh, in the interlude um, it just it reads as classic rock and roll while giving a message that even the stuff that's not that doesn't sound like rock and roll to, to modern to modern ears 25 years later it's still the same spirit it's still the same confrontational brash attitude it's still rock and roll uh, i'm almost surprised that the rock and roll hall of fame hasn't officially adopted this as their anthem because they've received a lot of flack over the years for being inclusive which i don't you know i have mixed feelings about it but for the most part, I'm on board because you, rock and roll is a was a movement. It wasn't so much just about a particular set of instruments being used in a particular way by a certain demographic of people. Rock and roll was about an attitude, and there are certainly artists uh, to this day who we would you know who like Chuck Berry or Buddy Holly or anyone else from that era would have a very hard time recognizing as uh, kindred spirits, kindred musical spirits. Uh, but because of the aura, the attitude that they bring to the table when they, when they, when they uh, present their music to the world, it, it, it still gives you that rock and roll vibe underneath it all. Uh, and I think this song is a, is, is a very persuasive, uh, editorial championing that that type of attitude so uh, good song it's a good song it's catchy it's to the point and it, it makes its point very well I like that a lot so next Wednesday we'll be going on to the next number one in August of 1980 that song will be Magic by Olivia Newton-John I am familiar with that song. It is not a rock and roll song, unless you know you apply the broad parameters of um, Billy Joel and and people like me who are suckers for anything that even remotely resembles rock music. But I wouldn't necessarily classify it as rock music. Um, but we'll get to that next week. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. Please join me next Wednesday for the next number one of the 1980s. Until then, please like this video if you liked it. Please subscribe to the channel if you feel so inclined. And most of all, make music better. <laughs>